Hey from the kitchen folks, it's July the 19th, it's the hottest day of the year so apologies for the skimpy attire but generally speaking it is unbearably hot, it's 40 degrees, not something I'd ever thought I'd say in Leeds. So I realise that you're not watching this film until probably September and that's because I've got a big backlog of films which I'm releasing on a weekly basis but I've got another baking bread experiment film for you. So I asked you what would you like to see baked into a loaf of bread? I've had some good answers, cream crackers, Turkish delight, which I really like the sound of, but my favorite by far is from Tim who messaged me and he wanted to know what would happen if you baked a pot noodle into a loaf of bread. Let's find out. So here's my pot noodle. It's a king pot noodle. So I've gone for the larger size one, chicken and mushroom flavor. Um, these are common in the UK. If you don't live in the UK, you might not have seen these before, but I'm sure you've got instant noodles or something similar anyway. What these actually have in them is a lot of extra flavorings and so forth. Okay, let's open that bad boy. And this is what we've got. So, first of all, you get a sachet of soy sauce in there. We'll save that for later. And then you've got noodles and lots of powdery flavorings. So what I'm going to do is to try and separate these a little bit. Um, I think it's gonna be easier said than done, but I'll have a go. Okay, so that majoritively is the noodles and that majoritively is the powdery flavorings with some bits of noodles in there. Now the powdery flavorings will contain salt and I don't want to put that anywhere near my yeast because salt and yeast don't like each other. So I'm going to need to take into account the fact that these noodles need to be hydrated a little bit. I'm not gonna fully hydrate them, but I am gonna take that into account right now before I continue with the recipe. So keeping the flavor into one side, I'm gonna go back to the noodles and put them back in the pot. And I'm gonna get some water boiling in my kettle. So the kettle's boiled and I'm gonna add a little bit of water onto the noodles. I don't wanna to add too much but just enough to hydrate them a little bit. That'll do for now. So while I'm waiting for the noodles to hydrate, I'm going to prepare the yeast. So what I've got here is some homemade applesauce. This contains nothing but apples and sugar and some chives because it was actually an experimental apple and chive sauce. Now I'm not putting this in for the flavor. I'm putting this in for the fact that this contains quite a lot of good stuff for the yeast to feed on it. Actually, in essence, becomes a nutrient. And I'm gonna put that much in the bottom of my bread tin. Okay, I'm gonna pour on top of the applesauce 350 ml of warm tap water. I'm then gonna add one and a half teaspoonfuls of sugar. I'm gonna give this a stir around so it all mixes nicely. Then I'm going to add the first of two yeasts. This is Asda Easy Bake Yeast for home baking. So I'm going to put a little sprinkle of that on top. This is very fine yeast, as you can see. I have a little bit more. So there's probably the equivalent of three quarters of a teaspoonful gone there. So the second yeast I'm going to add is actually a beer yeast. It's a Cross My Loof Crystal Weissen yeast. And trust me, this is some good stuff. I've had some great results in bread with this and in all brews I've done to be quite honest. It's very fast acting. I'm basically going to empty what's left in this packet. And you'll notice that this yeast, if it floats on top, is a little bit larger. Now there wasn't enough there. Ah, I thought there was going to be more than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a little bit more. So here's another packet just opened. I'm going to pour a little bit of this on top. No more now, that's enough. The yeast will feed on what's in there and it will form a colony. And I'm hoping for this to form a Krausen, just like when you're making beer, a foamy head on top, which will protect the yeast from when I add the other ingredients. So the yeast in there, I'm gonna cover this over with a tea towel, just to keep any contaminants out. And we'll come back to that in a little while. So just coming back to my noodles, they seem to have absorbed the water quite nicely. So I'm happy enough with that. So I've got noodles there, I'm in the dry powdery stuff 
just there and my soya sauce sachet there they'll all be going in later now i need 500 grams of flour i'm going to use strong white bread flour mostly so there's probably going to be 350 grams of that and then 150 grams of wholemeal bread flour so there's 507 grams of flour weighed out that'll do right we'll come back to that when the yeast has had time to activate right the yeast has now been in there for an hour and i'm happy that that is colonizing and it's doing something quite positive so i'm now going to start to add the other ingredients i'm going to begin by adding some of the flour i'm not going to add it all i want it to float on top of the water there we go so here's my noodles they've absorbed all the water so what i'm going to do is i'm going to sprinkle them on top of the flour I want to try and spread them out evenly if I can. I'm trying for them not to touch the water in case there's any salt in this which might damage the yeast. Now I'm going to add the rest of the flour. Apologies for the background noise, that's Leeds Bradford Airport. Somebody going on their jollies. And now this is what came out of the pot noodle, all the flavouring stuff and that. So I'm adding that on top of the flour. I'm going to add a few Italian mixed herbs because I like Italian mixed herbs. I have them in everything. A little bit of salt, some pepper, and I'm going to add three teaspoonfuls of olive spread. This is Olivio, you can use butter, margarine, whatever you want, but I'm using olive spread. It's very, very melted because of the temperature outside. And that's it. Job done. So it's simply a case of getting this inside the bread maker now. Now it's seven o'clock in the evening. I'm going to have a line tomorrow. It's my first day of annual leave for the summer holidays. So I'm going to get up at eight. So I'm going to put this on for 13 hours. So my bread maker is a Panasonic SD2500. It's a really good little bread maker. Had it a long time, baked many loaves. So that tin just sits inside and twists into place. That goes down, lid closed. Okay, so I want a large loaf and I want a medium bake. They're already in. And I want to bake it on setting number one, which is a basic loaf. I don't want to do anything fancier than that, but I want it to go for a long time. So the default time is four hours, but I want it going to 13 hours. Right. That means that when I get out of bed, the bread will be ready and it will smell lovely. Let's start. Countdown is on. So I'll catch you in the morning when the bread's ready. Right now, I need a cold beer in the garden. Hey folks, it's the next morning. There's less than a minute to go. The moment of truth is upon us. What am I going to get? Let's find out. Has it risen? Oh, it's not done bad. It's not done bad. Okay, it's not a huge dome on top, but that's not bad. Okay, it's risen better than I thought it might do. Let's get this out. Yeah, that isn't bad at all, actually. Okay, let's get this emptied. That's come out nicely. Oh. <laughs> Can smell chicken and mushroom pot noodle. <laughs> oh dear. So the top's a little bit flat and I've not helped it then by just uh, leaving it on its top. But okay, so it doesn't look too bad at all. It would have been nice if the top was just a bit more domed, but I can live with that. Oh, I'm quite excited to try in this, but I need to leave it to cool for a little while. So I'm going to tip it on its side. And I'm going to let the steam that's in there come out of that hole. I'll be back in a little while. Okay, half an hour has passed. I think we need to have a look inside it. I can really, really smell the pot noodle. It's brilliant. Right, let's have a look. It's got a crispy outside and a nice soft inside. Yes! Sweet 
gone from the pot noodle. Amazing. So it's got a nice crumb. Look at that. I mean, that is, uh, and it's really, really soft and moist. That's a nice loaf of bread and it smells fantastic. Right, the taste test. That's delicious. It's not immediately obvious, but it's a chicken and mushroom pot noodle. It's just a really lovely flavoursome savoury bread. Mmm, absolutely gorgeous. A huge success. In fact, the more I'm eating it, the more I'm tasting the pot noodle flavour now. It's brilliant. Big thumbs up from me. So the initial question was, what happens if you bake a pot noodle into a loaf of bread? The answer is, it makes very, very nice bread. I'll catch you on the next film, folks. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is stewmoss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.